Hello! Uh, feels a bit weird doing another video, it's been a very long time. Uh, I just thought that I would start trying to make more kind of chill, less intense videos. Uh, I don't really enjoy video editing, so hopefully this will be a bit more kind of natural, talky kind of video. Uh, so I wanted to start with a kind of I don't want to say video series because I'm notoriously bad at keeping series going, but just a sort of letter to myself, I suppose, of when I started digital painting, what did I want to know? So I've got stuff on my screen for no particular reason, mostly because I don't know what to put on my screen. So it's just a personal project I'm working on at the moment, but uh, I might do some stuff on my screen I'll, I'll see um but yeah digital painting i've been doing it now for about nine years just i started in about 2012 learning how to digital paint uh and it's such a <laughs> difficult experience when you're starting at digital painting uh don't get me wrong i still struggle very much with digital painting now uh, i think people always will it never goes away but it's a real struggle when you first start and you've just got to keep at it and it does come you just got to keep going so I do have my <laughs> my blog from when I was at university I think this is about 2013 and uh, there's not a ton of pa digital painting on it because we got taught traditional stuff when I was like, initially when I was at university but um, I start trying to digital paint, so I'll just pull this over here onto this screen. This is the first one I can find from 2014, so I, I mean I was digital painting before, but I don't know where the paintings have gone. But this is one of my first, <laughs> like, imaginative paintings. Uh, I remember doing it, I remember finding it really hard. I wasn't very happy with it when I finished it, but oh boy! Did I have a lot to learn? Uh, it, j yeah, <laughs> you just got to keep going, and that's kind of the main thing, I guess. It's good to know about digital painting, and it's not what you want to hear because you just want to be good straight away. But there's so much to learn: composition, color theory, values, saturation, just tons of stuff. That yes, you can learn it by sitting down and reading. I've been doing a lot of sort of fundamentals reading recently, but some of it will just come to you from doing lots and lots of photo studies, lots and lots of painting from life, you know, set up a still life on your desk, go out with a sketchbook, draw things, uh, and it does come, it's just a case of kind of learning observation, learning to understand why what you see looks the way it does, uh, and just keep tracking. There's uh, a lot of struggles that I had personally with brushes and stuff so you can see like in this image I had a lot of fights with textured brushes back then uh, and kind of got a little bit carried away with textured brushes. Nowadays I literally just use either the hard round brush or like geometric shaped brushes and sometimes I make my own brushes uh, like this one for instance la 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 I literally have just used that for like foliage on this painting for instance um, so I would say don't stress too much about learning about textured brushes uh, I literally just use like this brush and the round brush that's pretty much it uh, but I'll get back to brushes in a minute. Uh, so something that I found that helps a lot when you're learning to paint is just paint lots and lots of different things. So I was doing studies of mountains, studies of buildings, studies of people, like studies, studies, studies from photographs, from life, etc. Uh, you know, stuff like this, that's oils just keep painting stuff and you'll start to see things that you start coming back to uh, and they'll be kind of things that 
will often end up kind of forming the essence, at least the initial essence of your style. Uh, so if you really like painting foliage, you're often going to end up re reverting back to doing foliage over and over again, which is good because that's your thing. Uh, the same goes for cars, buildings, whatever. Uh, just see what you calls to you and stick with it. Like, don't worry about feeling that you have to paint specific things or you have to go down specific routes. Um, I felt like I had to do sci-fi stuff and really epic buildings and stuff and it's good to try it but if you don't like it you don't like it at the end of the day so do the things you enjoy you can see I'm starting to find like, trees and stuff that I like but then equally I'll start trying to paint deserts and then I'm like bashing my head against it um going outside I know it's not what you want to hear but it's really useful <laughs> uh at least if you're, if you're like a, an environmental artist like me you want to paint stuff that's outside going outside taking photos doing studies uh getting inspired it's all about finding the inspiration so if i had not gone to some gardens and realized hey i really like gardens i would not have been doing things paintings like this and now I go always to gardens, like a lot of sort of classic English gardens, walled gardens. They interest me, they inspire me. So I go out and I take lots of photos. Uh, on that vein, uh, choosing to topics that you enjoy. Uh, make it easy for yourself. Choose reference that you like and choose reference that you know you can paint. You've got to give yourself some confidence. Trying to paint stuff that's really hard and challenging all the time is going to be demoralizing. Uh, it will take time to find the things that you're good at. So there's going to be that kind of difficulty at first where you're sort of smashing your head against a wall, trying to figure it out. Um, and equally, you'll start to realize the kinds of lighting that you are capable of replicating or that you enjoy painting. Uh, it applies to 3D blockouts as well. So this image, for instance, painted it over a 3D block out. I know that I like painting sort of 45 degree light, quite dramatic light. Um, I like it when there's dappled lighting coming through trees and so on. So that's what I do and that's what I seek. And then I will enjoy it more and I'm better at painting that kind of thing. Uh, what else did I wish I was known? Uh, using 3D block outs is okay. Um, I found a lot of clients because uh, I do like freelance now more uh, they like that I use 3D because you can get multiple angles they can get a feel for a scene quicker than just if I do a scribble because I'm not very good at drawing <laughs> um, so and especially in sort of a game context you know you can almost walk around the environment even if it isn't a super basic block out uh, you can get a feel for what an environment's going to feel like from multiple angles um, yeah, so brushes. Don't worry about finding lots and lots of textured brushes. I have personally found that textured brushes for me do somewhat dilute my my focus on getting good at painting, I guess. I, I do use them sometimes and I think it's good to know them. But if you buy a text a brush pack, like a textured brush pack, often the artist will have made those brushes for very specific reasons that they personally use them for. A brush pack could be anything from like five brushes to hundreds of brushes. If you download one that's hundreds of brushes, oh my goodness, it's so overwhelming. And you don't know why those brushes were made in the first place by the artist that made that brush pack. So uh, yes, there is maybe like four brushes that I occasionally use from other artists. I have this huge brush pack here that I don't really use. It's just kind of there, sitting there. Um, I use this Popkins brushes. Um, I'll put a link in the description if I can find it. Um, Cause I think he's moved to a new Gumroad page now, um, but I'll have a look. And uh, he has these super basic brushes. I've made a few variations like these ones and they're very very simple uh, and I know what I want to use them for and if I need another brush I can make it myself. Making brushes is super duper easy so it's definitely worth learning to do that. 
and you can kind of make ones that sit in your style uh, over time and so on. Uh, this is going to seem really obvious, I don't know, maybe. I wish I had known the difference between flow and opacity in brushes. So up here you have opacity and flow. They're currently at 100%. So if I take my brush and just paint in here and then set this to grey. So this is what my brush paints like with both on 100%. Now the kind of default thing that you want to do if you're trying to blend in Photoshop is to turn the opacity down because you kind of get stuff like this and you know you can darken it here and then you can soften it out but you quickly get all these blurry, uh, not blurry, but overlapping lines. It doesn't look good. It's very distracting, it's very obvious. Uh, opacity is not the answer to your question or my question when I was learning. <laughs> It's flow. I sometimes turn my flow down to as little as 10%. Uh, and it means that basically less uh, paint comes out of the brush. It makes it much easier to blend. So I'm using the alt color picker to uh, color pick. And blending is so much easier with this technique. And it took me so long to realize this, I'm so mad. Um, hopefully that helps some people. So if I compare this to trying to blend with 100% uh, flow, which I, I do tend to do, but uh, it comes with a lot of practice. You can see that the uh, blend is a bit more difficult to achieve. I want that brush, there we go. I don't like having a uh, tapering, brush tapering on. But yeah, you can see it's much easier, uh, much harder for me to blend. Can do it, but yeah, it takes a bit more effort. So I don't know. I just thought I'd share that as a little thing. Um, a big thing I used to do with my paintings was uh, I totally lose any nuance in the values. So I'd go super duper dark and super duper light, and then maybe a few values in the middle, and then that was kind of it and I didn't have any sort of variation in my values. So I'm just going to see if I can find an example here. Let's just randomly click on one. Oh, Tamagotchis. Uh, I'm trying to find a study. Ah, yes, these will do. Okay, so if I click on this uh, and copy that image, it's just... Uh, you're gonna copy image. There we go. Okay. It's not quite the same aspect ratio, but fine. You can do what you like. So looking at this, for example, uh, this study is quite contrasty. There's quite a lot of noise. Like if you squint, there isn't really value separation between the uh, hills. There's no atmospheric perspective. Uh, and there's no kind of subtle nuance to the values. So if I make it black and white, you can see that there is kind of quite dark values and quite light values sort of immediately next to each other and it's quite rough. Um, it's quite noisy. Whereas something like this... Uh, uh, between the light and the dark, I've tried to separate the values a bit more. So you kind of got your shadow values and your light values. Uh, shadow values and light values, shadow values and light values. I've tried to keep them separate. It's still not perfect. I'm definitely not an expert, but my values here are far more controlled than they used to be when I used to try and paint. I wish I had some stuff from, um, from imagination. I mean, there will be somewhere, but it's so hard to find. Well. I'm not very good at uh, ordering this blog. Lots and lots of old projects in here that I forgot exist. Okay, let's try this. There we go. Uh, so you can see that 
there's just less control to the values here. Uh, I haven't been very kind of choosy about my lighting, apart from adding in some like god rays, which who doesn't love a good god ray? Uh, but compared to this, I've been a lot more kind of considerate of my values now. This still isn't perfect, it's not finished, so I'll finish it at some point soon. Um, but yeah, values, super duper hard. Colour, super duper hard. Uh, I'm still not super happy with the colours for this one, but I would say that generally I didn't used to push colour hard enough, like get the saturation and the, the oomph in there. Having super saturated colours to contrast against your less saturated colours. Um, if I choose a colour, uh, let's say I just kind of choose, I don't know, like a green. Often I'll be like, okay, I've chosen my green, but now I want more oomph. So I'll generally push up the saturation and then I might hue shift it to a more interesting colour. So often I might push greens towards yellow. Uh, if I choose a blue, I might push it more towards purple. So just see what interesting things you can get out of the colours that you would usually take for granted and just choose a green and then not think about it again. Uh, but yeah, very, very hard. Uh, <laughs> another thing for me that I wish I had kind of known sooner, well, not known, but basically if I used to finish paintings and I think they were finished, I'm quite a rushy person, so I tend to rush around, really quickly finish the painting, be like, yeah, bam, it's done. Um, nowadays, if I reach that stage where I'm like, yeah, it's done, I then will go away for like a day, come back and then look at it again and go, no, it wasn't finished. If I ever think a painting is finished, it's probably not finished. So I just try to finish the painting properly, not rush around because I am rushy. Um, it's hard as well because paintings always have this sort of ugly phase where you've just you've like smushed in some colours and you've got some values and it's just horrible. You're fighting against it. You want to walk away and you want to cry. <laughs> um, that often happens and pushing through that phase and then trying to not rush after that phase. Uh, there's a lot of kind of just tempering myself. It's not finished. Keep going. Um, don't give up on the painting. Yes, it's in an ugly phase, but it'll get better. Um, sometimes it's good to abandon a painting, but over time, and again, this, this is what I keep coming back to, is time, 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 time. Keep painting. Keep trying. Don't give up because you just have to have patience. Put the time in. The painting will get there. It will all get there eventually. Um, just keep trucking. Um, what else? Oh, layer modes. Uh, try layer modes in when you're painting. There's so many interesting layer modes. Something I like to do um, is I grab all my layers. And I learned this from Tom Scholes. So shout out to him. He won't be watching this, but shout out. Uh, and I might put it on, I don't know, pin light. Let's see what pin light does. If I just grab my painting and do this. There's just interesting colours in there that I wouldn't ex like have made myself. And then I can apply a layer mask. That is not my tablet pen. Uh, and I'll probably invert it actually. And then I can just see what happens if I paint it here. See what colours come through that are interesting. Sometimes there are no colours that are interesting. There, so I like that orange. I like that little taste of orange there. Oh, I like that little taste of greeny blue. So I might allow those to stay. Nice bit of bright blue there. Nice little bit of pink. So I just start letting little peaks of colour that I have no control over. I can just choose whether it's there or not. Just let those show through in places. Have a bit of fun. Ooh, I like that purple. And then I can, you know, I can refine it. I can come in and paint bits out or... Oh, I've got lots of nice stuff going on here. I can 
control it more. But just let, let the colour do some crazy stuff. Colour has so much to offer and it's so cool. And the layer modes in Photoshop just give you so many weird things. Um, so yeah, crazy colours there, but I like it, so I might keep that. Uh, and there's tons of different layer modes as well. So if I just cycle through the layer modes, you can see the bits that I'm allowing to show. They're doing very different things. So experiment. I had it on pin light. Pin light. Um, just, I found a lot of my paintings in the past. So if I go to my, uh, yeah, my art station real quick. Uh, some of these paintings, these are quite old, but these were experimental. Just grabbed photos, slapped colors and custom shapes on layer modes, gradients, and just, just see what happens. Like if you look close at these, I don't know how to zoom in on here, but a lot of it has like weird artifacts and edges because I've just kind of slapped colors together like round here on the side. Totally experimental, but they're some of the most kind of formative paintings that I've done. Uh, and occasionally I'll just go into Photoshop and just just try colors or take old paintings and hash them together with other paintings just to see what happens. Uh, and I'll learn things and get inspired again. It, you know, if I'm not feeling inspired, it's hard to get re-inspired. And it does happen where you'll just enter a hardcore art slump for months. Months, weeks, days, whatever. It doesn't matter how long it is, it sucks. And uh, sometimes just kind of smushing some colours around, at least for me, really helps. Um, throughout all of this, you're probably going to kind of hate painting. You'll have little moments of hope little moments of serious hate but it's a kind of winding painful path uh, and a very enjoyable path sometimes <laughs> uh, but yeah it, painting is really hard everything takes a long time rendering takes a super long time this painting on my screen I'm kind of at the finalizing stage but there's still a lot of bits like the water in the foreground <sighs> there's so much to do here cut that um, takes a long time takes a lot of patience I hate painting so often <laughs> uh, but then I have moments where it's amazing and it makes it worth it and I get cool cool jobs and it feels good so uh, yeah I don't really know what the point of this video was but I guess I'm directing it to my past self uh, almost 10 years ago now when I was just beginning with my little Wacom bamboo tablet and whatever version of Photoshop and seeing paintings and being like wow there's no way I'll ever be able to do that and I still get that but stuff feels more achievable now and I feel more capable um, and I still go through all the art slumps and all the art pain but I understand it better now I understand that the art pain will go away Sometimes I just need to go away and not paint for ages. Sometimes I just need to experiment with layer modes in Photoshop. Maybe I need to go to a garden, take some photos and sit by a pond. You know, I, I build up my sort of repertoire of weapons against the art pain. Um, and I hope you can too. I guess this video is more like, if you're struggling with painting, I want you to understand that it'll get better. You just got to keep pushing. Uh, and yeah, past me, y you'll get there. <laughs> so uh, yeah, hopefully this will be the first of a few different sort of talky videos where I can just show you, uh, well I've got a bunch of topics planned and they're just much easier for me to make and uh, I hope you like this format and uh, yeah, I'm gonna make maybe a Patreon or something. I'll see, I'll share it in the description if I do. Basically I'd like to get better equipment for videos. Uh, I'm using a little webcam at the moment, it'd be good to get like a proper camera. Um, I've got my window behind me so I'm kind of super blown out. Uh, it would be good to just get some proper equipment for video making uh, or you can just support me and I also I have on my gum road lots of different websites here but on my gumroad 
uh, I do mentorships, art fe fundamental art, men uh, art fundamentals, mentorships, uh, color theory, uh, composition, etc., etc. There's like a full eight week one on one course that you can buy, or you can buy just like a one on one hour long session, an hour, an hour and a half. Um, and also I'm doing like group mentorships occasionally. So my current one is sold out already. Uh, that's going to be in September, but assuming that all goes well, I'm going to be doing like group mentorships potentially of art fundamentals, but my current ones I'm doing a 3D environment art, uh, kind of holistic rounded approach to just making environments like no, no, like hardcore. This is how you make a tree in Blender specifically. It's just sort of general good practices that applies to whatever software you might have uh, on your computer. Uh, so yeah, hopefully more stuff like that in the future. I guess I'll make a Patreon just with like a support me tier for now and then maybe I'll start doing more stuff on there. So any suggestions, things you want to see, let me know. At some point I'll make a video answering questions that are in the YouTube comments. So feel free to leave comments. Uh, I might go back through some old videos that I've done in the past and answer those questions too just because there's a few that I didn't get around to answering. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff I want to do basically, so uh, see how it goes, but hopefully it'll be a bit easier. Um, so yeah, thanks for sticking around to the end and see you in the next video.